Welcome to Make Today Count, your 20 minutes of fresh conversation served up to inform, educate and inspire an abundant life. I'm your host Ross Dean and each episode I chat to thought leaders, influencers and experts in their game who all have one thing in common, the desire to go that extra mile. Pushing against the status quo to create a richer life for both themselves and those around them. Powered by compassion and driven by the need to leave the world that little bit better than when they arrived. Okay, hi guys, and welcome back to episode six of Make Today Count. We have another amazing guest for you today in the form of Sophie Robinson from Soro Studios. Sophie Robinson runs a full-service market agency, Soro Studio, in Ipswich, UK, which has started in September 2008. Prior to this, Sophie cut her teeth in the music industry, working as a concert promoter, DJ, working in high-profile celebrity and fashion events, and later in a full-service market agency in Suffolk before having her daughter and starting Soro Studio. Sophie, it's great to have you here. How are you? I'm good, very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. No, it was, um, it's, I've been really looking forward to this conversation because I think you know, when a lot of people start their business, you know, this word brand and branding is something that's sort of thrown about all over the place. And I think for a lot of people, it's kind of, they're kind of left thinking, well, what the, you know, what the heck am I supposed to do? And, and what am I supposed to do? And I think a lot of people just kind of get the basics together. Um, but what I really want to use this conversation for tonight is to have a real chat around I guess just starting off on the right foot, putting some work in at the beginning so that, you know, later on you get the sort of the best out of it and you don't have to do too much tidying up. But before we do that, um, if the listeners haven't come across the work that you do before, um, could you just tell me a little bit about your background? Um, we've touched upon that in the bio, but just a little bit more around that and kind of how it's taken you to where you are today. Yeah, so basically uh, my degree is in uh music management and marketing and i also mm. have an hnd in branding and promotion mm. so hence where the um the music uh stuff comes into play because when i was a lot younger all i wanted to do was work in music mm-hmm. um so for i joined i went to university in 2010 um yeah. no sorry i graduated in 2010 um i at that point was running my first brand let's call it It was club night called blue rinse um it was based on grannies um i didn't really realize that i was building a brand at that point um but i bet it basically the music was from today to the 1950s and there was lots of werther's originals and (laughs) cocktails and teapots and it was all a bit kitsch but um I was very particular about how it looked and all of, and you know, whether something was the right color. And like I said, the marketing that we did was, you know, it was, uh, pre social media, which Mm -hmm. is hilarious. Um, in within the degree, um, and definitely nothing that I'd learned in the real world. It was all very much theory based. So, um, I didn't actually realize the relevance of what I'd done at that point so yeah so basically I had this DJ night um and I ended up franchising it and actually learned quite a lot just from running that because I eventually sold it but it had a radio um radio show we DJed Mm -hmm. for various um music acts um and in Oxford and London and uh, Buckinghamshire and Canterbury and now it tours I sold it um, a few years ago but it's still running now Um, so I was running that at that time and then I went off to go be a concert promoter Mm -hmm. um, which sounds way more glamorous than it (laughs) is which is essentially you know for anyone that needs to or would like to know a music promoter essentially books live gigs yeah. Um, but the it's all well and good booking a band to play a venue, but if you don't market it, um, no one's going to know. So yeah. um, 
that was my first like marketing role. Um, it didn't have the word marketing in it, but it was definitely, you know, a lot of designing ads, proofreading ads, buying ads, mm. putting a strategy together. Yeah. Um, you know, how I was essentially going to sell these tickets. Um, me and my boss, we did um, Roxy Music. We did Public Enemy. We mm-hmm. worked with a lot of high profile venues. So it was Hammersmith Apollo, uh, Forum, Jazz Cafe. And then, like I said, we did the arena tour for Roxy Music. So I really cut my teeth doing that. Yeah. Um, and obviously working to a budget, um, which is paramount um, to making a profit. So, um, and handling all of that, recording that, you know. Um, and then uh, it was in the time where HMV went under the first time. I think yeah, okay. um, that I got made redundant mm-hmm. um, when off there. And I think I took a year out at that point. So I'd come straight from uni um, and then I had enough of my year out and I went back into London and I worked with um, high profile fashion brands and events, booking music. Uh, so DJs and talent that would match with their brands um, and I'd essentially get brands on celebrities too. Um, yeah. So I worked with a lot of big brands like Louis Vuitton, Madonna, Hunter Boots, um, David Beckham, Victoria Beckham. Um, it was a, a very A-list world, but I mm. I couldn't imagine myself doing that for a very long time. I saw a lot of the people within that world had to make a lot of sacrifices within their um yeah. personal life and that just wasn't a priority for me so um i met my partner moved back to ipswich um started working in a marketing agency in um mendelsham of all places uh <laughs> but they actually had some quite good brands so y vale hot point virgin um they were like the main things uh yeah. that i worked on with them um uh, and I went through the ranks really quickly there. So um, just as I was approaching my, I want to say second year, I got pregnant. Um, mm. And throughout the whole thing, I was going to go back and this baby wasn't <laughs> going to change my life. And all yeah. that. I mean, totally naive things that someone, that someone would say that hadn't had a child. And then I think <laughs> it was it was quite evident throughout my maternity leave that I just yeah. could not leave her and childcare costs and commuting yeah. and all of these things. So initially, um, Soro Studio was going to be called Soro Social because um, okay. I was just going to do uh, social media. Yeah. But then I realized that the 10 years of experience and my degree meant that actually I should be doing a lot more than just social media and I'd be selling myself short if I offered, just offered those services. Yeah. Um. So, I changed it to Soro. No, nope, no, it was then going to be Soro Marketing, and then Soro Studio. Um, was the one that I uh, settled on. So that was uh that started in September of last year, yeah. uh, officially. Um, and since then we've worked with over twenty five brands and businesses locally and. Uh, towards London um, to help their businesses get seen so that's kind of where I am right now and that all that kind of um, experience that you'd had you know around all the different sort of positions and jobs that you would had um, in London that kind of got you to here there must have been such a such an experience and, and, and put you in such good stead to set up your own studio now because you've seen how all these different brands work and how they sort of interact with their target audience and that kind of thing what was what was one of the things that all those good brands sort of done really well was it was there anything in particular do you think I mean all of these brands I mean they're big because they're consistent and they've managed Mm. to um they've managed to instill trust in their branding um you know even Louis Vuitton you know everything about it is high end and everyone knows that Louis Vuitton is high end and even their offices are glamorous it's you know it's not it's not um 
It's just the consistency that each and every brand who they partner with, what they do, how they word things. It's all consistency and, you know, and to convey trust because it doesn't, com- it yeah. doesn't confuse anyone at that point. And if you're not confusing anyone, everyone's getting the message. Everyone trusts you. Well, yeah. if you're good, of course. If yeah, you're not, of course. then, you know, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything, but, you know. And I, and I think when I, when I speak to a lot of sort of other business owners, um, especially those with small businesses, that consistency is something that um, a lot of people struggle with. I think in the in the first instance, they kind of get things going, they maybe create themselves a logo or they create themselves some, some kind of stationery and then they sort of add to it as they go. But I think what they find is that it's just keeping that kind of consistency because they haven't had that kind of solid foundation around sort of taking a step back and, and really looking at what they want to do. Um, when we talk about people and why they come to you for, for help, Sophie, is it a range of different things or what are the sort of things that the problems that people come to you with? Um, it really does depend. Um, I'm seeing a trend in social media, um, which is fine by me. I love social media. Um, I think it's a really great PR tool. Um, Mm. I think it's a really great lead generation tool done correctly. Um, a lot of people either struggle with the time to understand how to do these things or implement it correctly. Um, I get quite, uh, pernickety about consistency and mm. I don't, they're, they're brand guidelines. I, I do believe they're guidelines, not rules. Um, mm. therefore they are, they're there to be bent. Um, cause if they don't bend progressions, not made and you can't evolve, but mm. I do believe in sticking to guidelines that is for your brand. So, um, I guess people come to me for, advice on how to do that i get i'm doing a lot of strategy work at the moment um we do do a lot of print still um but even when i'm advising with print it is very much about what your brand message is it's not like i'll go on to moo and get 50 500 i don't know i don't even go on to moo so i don't know but you know do not skimp like get it right once and get it like do it once get it right and then you don't have to do it again um and is it those sort of people that you're getting come through the door is it people that have maybe tried to go it alone realize that it hasn't really paid off in the way that they'd hoped and then they sort of want to get more of a solid kind of like you say a a brand structure yeah it's uh time poor people uh people that really don't know what they're doing um people that aren't necessarily happy but they don't know why um that's interesting (laughs) it's it's um or like they're not happy. They just they know it's not right, but they don't know mm. how to improve it. There's a okay. lot of that. Um, yeah. It really varies. Like we do do brand building. Um, we do design work on existing brands. Um, we've got one client that came to me that didn't really do much marketing because they didn't need to. They just had their colours and their logo, and we've slowly, slowly, yeah, like, implemented an identity that's consistent throughout all their marketing messages. So. Mm. It really, I mean, I would, I love building brands from birth, yeah. from conception. That's, yeah. that is my favorite because then you really get to know the brand and, um, and even the client because the client doesn't necessarily know that their brand, even though they think it might be a separate entity, is totally infiltrated with their personality. And yeah. so it's kind of getting to the crux of the business, but also the owner, um, so I really enjoy that that process because um, you know sometimes getting to know a brand that already exists where there's already an extent you know a message but they might not be happy with it. There's yeah. sometimes there can be a few teething problems for a few months, but I think everyone gets like, understands that you know there might be there's sometimes a level of um, mind reading that needs to go on but i always kind of say to people mm-hmm. that you're not going to know what you don't like until you see it and yeah. you know you can't be you can't be um precious about these things mm. and i think just that you know we mentioned it in the intro but just the word brand or branding itself often leaves people thinking you know what the heck am i supposed to do in from your perspective um how how would you kind of describe what makes a brand and what is a brand well a brand is so much more than a logo which is yeah. the mistake that 
a lot of people that oh, I need a logo. Well, <laughs> okay, brilliant. Um, a brand is an all encompassing thing that represents you and your business. So, yeah. whilst a logo or icon is totally imperative, it needs to be able to withstand to be able to to um what's the word represent you Mm. by itself um and there's a really fine balance in keeping that simple um because really it it's meaningless as as it when it starts off but it's what you and your business do consistently your brand message your ethos how you conduct your work all of these things you know what you look like is that something you know yeah. how everything is what creates your brand and that's and it's all about perception yeah um and that <laughs> is what creates the brand the colors will have to obviously match with that um because colors have their own messaging in themselves but yeah yeah it's it's consistency um and authenticity and trust that create a brand in my eyes yeah and i think also there's just those other things like you know um the words that you use in copy and and you know the photographs that you use that's something that i'm a bit more closely um i will work a bit more closely with and when you kind of step back and look at all those areas there's so many different sort of facets that that make up this brand as we call it um to, to kind of consider um when what do you think in you know from your experience and what you've seen the people that you've worked with what generally um are businesses usually getting wrong when it comes to branding is there sort of key things that people are usually kind of not quite hitting the mark on well i would always say hire a professional because everyone seems to think yeah. everyone's got like a mate or they, you know, <laughs> there's things on fiverr yeah. yeah um um and like I said before, do it properly once and you won't have to do it again. Yeah. Um, so I would say that I know it kind of, sometimes it can become secondary. Um, mm. but actually what can then, cause you're too busy starting your business and, you know, building your website and all of these yeah. other costs or, you know, mountains of costs that come with, um, starting a business, but then you'll soon find that if you haven't done that properly, properly, it will become a detriment to your, business yeah. later down the line um and it's just little things that i guess you wouldn't pick up unless you were looking for them yeah. but it's all of the small things that create the message it's even things like inconsistent use of capital letters or okay using the wrong font um yeah. uh using a drop shadow on something that will immediately make something look really cheap um yeah. it's really it's it, it's hard to explain um mm. but and, and, I, and i guess that, and i guess somewhat the landscape's changed a little bit to maybe how it was because you know we now have services um available to you know everyone like canva and and, and places like that which um give you i guess more control and a, and, a, and a bit more kind of idea around some of these things but but still it, it it's that it's that planning it's that um touch that a, a professional gives it to really sort of allow you to dig deep into what you want to do before you start creating anything um well i love canva like i use canva for a lot yeah, of things um yeah. but you have still got to have the eye like you've still got to be able to know about your widows and your orphans and your and the use of negative space and you still got Mm. to be able to see how things can work together um and that is only i think canva's brilliant for presentations and social media posts um but some actually sometimes i don't use um canva for presentations sometimes yeah when because, properly designed because i just they're like they canva has massive limitations and yeah. i 
people are asked, I do think obviously if you're doing everything at a ground level and you're keeping your costs down, yeah, it's wonderful. But there does get to a point where it doesn't quite do what you need it to do. Um, so, um, and yeah, that's all I shall say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think that there's a, there's a huge range of um, of benefits in in kind of putting that time aside at the beginning and and sort of planning out with someone um what we what have you seen kind of the main benefits you know because i guess for a lot of people i would guess the initial thought was you know maybe i can't afford to work with someone maybe i um haven't got the time to sort of sit down with them but that you know from my perspective i've seen in the past there's been so many benefits be it sort of just saving time you know you know there's there's so much um value in just kind of handing things off to other people you know i've always been a big um a promoter of kind of aces in their places kind of thing you know if you've got someone that does a really good job and 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 concentrates that's what they do why not give it to that person to do you know you're going to get a better service to give a better service to your clients if you're able to sort of um get someone else on board and effectively create a, a team um what other sort of benefits have you seen for your clients once they've got everything up and running in the right way that they've been able to kind of enjoy later? They just don't have to worry about it. It's mm. that it, it's the immediate looking professional yeah. without having to be like, Oh, sorry, it's not quite done yet. Oh, it's mm. not. Oh, I like that. Oh, kind of apologizing for it. They don't need to. Yeah. <laughs> And I think sometimes um, and it's done correctly and it's done professionally yeah. and it's done by someone that has checked everything, looked at everything, knows what to look for, what shouldn't be there, what should be there. Some people yeah. just want to put everything on there and be like, Oh my God, we do this and click this and click that. And some, you know, sometimes less is more. Yeah. There are, you know, there's, there's, I, I, uh, very much, um see the benefit in getting the right professional to do their job um and not yeah. trying to do everything because i'm not i mean i wish i was perfect but i'm not so <laughs> there's um yeah. there's definitely a benefit in it and sometimes yeah. i think cutting corners you can actually really see and again yeah. that's just a detriment to your business in yeah. the long run because it you'll be able to see and and if someone was kind of if they made the decision maybe they've um they were then looking for someone to work with um what would be your advice in trying to find the right kind of um designer or or studio um for them meet them check out yeah. their work yeah um i i don't share too much work um which is just a pers- personal preference mm. yeah. but um because um you know it it really um projects might not necessarily you know relate to what you're looking for but it doesn't mean that we're not the right fit um but i yeah. would say just get in touch ask for a portfolio i go for a coffee um i you know i tend to just ask questions if they want to know about the work that i do then obviously i can show them but yeah. it's day I think it's more down to how we get on, how I understand their baby. Um, If I was doing it from a personal perspective, um, I'm not into taking someone's, I'm going to just use a baby as an analogy again, taking (laughs) someone's baby and raising it the way I want to. um, Because whilst I'm the professional and I know what to look for and I can obviously guide and, um, help avoid mistakes i'm not the one that's going to be running the business in three five ten years time for them so i i it definitely needs um an element of collaboration between the studio and the client to make sure that the client is 100 percent happy with it um yeah. so it's just if it's all it's all down to what that person wants but i definitely feel like there needs to be an element of uh collaboration yeah. whilst understanding that the studio is probably going to be the lead and it should be the lead and we are the professionals and i'll be firm yeah. if 
um I feel like you're really doing the wrong thing but ultimately you're the ones that have got to live with it so it just Mm. definitely you know and then it's down to connection and if you get on with the people because you know that working relationship could potentially last your working lifetime so yeah I was actually going to say that yes that's that's super important I think with anything any anyone you choose to work with that you know they're a good fit for your personality and you feel that they they kind of get what you're you know your business is all about um and and just you know i know from in what i do it's just it's just you just have to go and meet people spend some time and you kind of get a gut feeling i think um you know it's a bit like buying a house when you walk into a house it's the, the one for you. you just get that feeling and i think that happens with people that you work with um you know you meet people at different stages through maybe through networking or you know maybe you should mention that you know good ways of kind of connecting with um people in your area networking events perhaps um you know obviously online i'm guessing um for studios such as yours sort of instagram is a good place to to maybe find people and um and again on your web presence um Mm -hmm. but um yeah i wholeheartedly agree it's just getting out and meeting people to to see who's a who's the best fit for you face-to-face interaction is still yes (laughs) <laughs> the most important you might only get to meet them once or twice until you see anything <laughs> yeah, yeah anyway but you know you've got to you've got to trust them and so yeah like say go with your gut yeah and some uh you know well thought out decision yeah. making obviously yeah 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 and even sort of approach them you may you know to spend some time before maybe put a down list together of things you want to capture and see kind of how they respond to the questions that you have as well you know yeah definitely I, I think anyone that's kind of work worth their salt will, will you know will um give you the time to sit down and sort of work through to give you a sense that you know how they can help you out so sort of preparing on your part i think as well is is, is quite a good um thing to think about as well um thinking about kind of maybe some of the myths we tell ourselves as to why we can't work with someone in the in this space um some of the things off the top of my head um could be i don't have the time we've touched upon too ex- expensive um maybe they you know a designer wouldn't get it right they wouldn't get me that kind of thing do you think a lot of people have problems with kind of handing work off especially when they've done it all themselves for such a long time there's definitely a stigma to putting a value of paying someone for their time okay um uh and it's you know it is what it is um i i would always say there's that there's going to be value in it in hiring a professional um just so you can also get on with running your own business and doing what you're good at instead of fan you know messing around with um Mm -hmm. something that actually you don't because you're wasting time like i'm a business owner i don't i have a virtual assistant i don't do there are stuff that is just does not work for me i'm time poor yeah um and like i said before i would never um i would never try and fix my own car for example (laughs) so i don't even Uh, know if i'd change the tire to be honest (laughs) but um yeah, you're like me. I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch it. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, yeah. So. But that's exactly right, isn't it? We would go to a garage. You know, we. You know, if we if we had something wrong with our health, we'd go to a doctor who's had, who's been to medical school and has the experience. You know, it's um. You know, anything wor- of worth. Um. You know, I believe that we should put it in the hands of those that are sort of experts in in those fields. Yeah, everyone like I said before everyone's got a mate everyone kind of goes on oh, marketing I can do that you just do this and the other and you're like well you've done it but you may have not have done it well or as well as or you know you may not have actually utilized all the platforms that you think you have or you yeah. know you have been well yes you have got this printed but it's terribly designed and it's on really cheap paper and you know it all the imagery is pixelated or yeah you know just things like that and you're like it, that and like I, I, I said, I think, there's no point cutting corners because it, yeah. it just comes out in the wash 
and I, th- and I think Sophie sometimes you know we're so close to our businesses you know um sometimes we don't necessarily see these things um, yeah 100 percent. you know so it, there's so much value in you know maybe if you're not at the stage to work with someone at the moment just get some people who you kind of respect and you maybe think I've got a good eye and just run it past them you know because I think we get so lost in the minutiae of what we're doing um sometimes we can't kind of see it from another point of view um especially a view from a you know prospective client or someone that we want to kind of attract with our business um, yeah definitely one of the other great things you you mentioned there was also around about saving time and um and the other thing to think about I'm sort of thinking back to my um experience and sort of um you know I've got two young children and at the time it was just it saved a ton of time not just in the business but freed up time to do other stuff at home and that kind of stuff mm. you know yeah. what I mean rather than you know sweating over a pdf for three hours because you you don't know how to move the cursor properly to get it in the right place or all this kind of stuff oh uh, my god there is so much more to lie <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean it's, it's like it, it, at the time, I think we just agonise ourselves by we just we just try and do it ourselves, and then we just waste so much time. And before you know it, you've lost about three hours, and um, and when well, you could have been something, doing something so much better, you know, if not at work with your family, with your other half, you know, gone for a meal or something, you know, it's just yeah, I could have watched The Lion King for the four hundred exactly. fifty-five time, yeah, fifth time, yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's just you know for me in in in, um in my experience that's something that's that's an area that's really helped me not just in saving time at work but also freeing up that time for the stuff that you know in all honesty really matters you know at home and and spending time with the kids well ultimately I think I mean the reason that I went self-employed was obviously I had my daughter and I was like what is the point of having her if (laughs) I'm then gonna go palm her off to someone yeah. I'm gonna have yeah. nine months with her and then I have got to go back to work and ultimately you start your own business because you eventually want the financial freedom to be able to do what you want and be your own boss and if you're actually slaving away and working more hours under the sun than you were and obviously we've all got to get our business working and it's so hard and you know the margins are so small and all of these mm. things but none of that is worth it if you can't actually yeah. gain that bel- balance that you wanted to. And otherwise you'll then resent it and then you won't want to work and then you'll burn out. And, you know, it took me, I'll work weekends and evenings and whatever I need to do mm-hmm. when I need to do it. But if I don't need to do it, then I really won't. Because yeah. it took and it took me, I would say, probably, it, well, the business, it's taken me the last like two months to realise that. Yeah. Um, yeah because you know Saturdays Sundays as soon as um my little girl went to bed the laptop mm. would come out yeah and um, the days that we do spend together I would feel so guilty so I would like because I would mm. have my phone out all the time I'd be answering calls and it's just yeah. not obviously there's an element of balancing and you have to do it yeah and whatever but if you know you are no use to anyone burnt out um. so and, you know, and to a certain extent, you know, we only learn these things by getting to a point where things do become manageable. So, you know, we have to try these things. We have to, you know, and we're not saying that there's not going to be times where you have to put your head down and you have to go for it and you have to do some out of hours work. But I think it's just when those instances become more frequent than not and you the weeks go gone by and maybe, you know, your free time is kind of um, very minuscule in regards to what you spent on other bits and pieces and you mentioned mm. something about you know virtual assistants and you know that that's another sort of avenue to use there's so many ways you know um i know for oh my god my virtual assistant is worth her weight in gold i know it's just it's crazy and and some of these things they're not necessarily expensive you know there's ways that you can get around it um for example with my business i've got you know answering calls and getting back to people i've got a phone answering service now and you, you can just pay per call if you want to there's so many mm. ways do this stuff um and to be honest you know i said before about putting um people that do what they do in the right jobs within your business you know like a phone answering service they can give you a probably they can answer in a couple of rings they can give you a really professional how you know um, perception we talked about perception before Mm -hmm. um for your business um and then they just send you an email as and when 
you know, you get a message and it can come and then you can deal with it as and when you need, you know, in, in some circumstances, it, it's very, there's so many quick wins that you can get a really great result on. And, yeah, definitely. And um, so there's lots of things. I think, I think we can, we could talk about this all, all night. <laughs> there's so many kind of facets to it, but you know, this, this podcast is called make today count and reason for it, you know, being is that no matter which area of our lives it is, whether it's health or nutrition or business and all these kinds of stuff. Um, what I really want people to get out of it, these conversations is that at the end of it, there's maybe a couple of things that they can do the next day. So if they're interested, maybe they want to start looking at their brand and maybe they, they, they felt that they've done okay up until now, but they really think there's something more that they can do. Maybe they have just kind of whittled together something, um, maybe a logo and some other bits and pieces, but they don't think it's consistent what's one small step and i just want to sort of go through one small step now as to maybe tomorrow something that you can get the i guess the cogs working around sort of pushing in the right direction what would you say would be a good kind of first step for them i would say to look like get everything out that they are using currently to promote their businesses and take a look that would be the first one would it is it consistent across all three all three i don't know where i got three from <laughs> all of the all of them you know do your business cards fully represent you does your logo fully represent you do your yeah. colors represent you does your any do you do any activity on social media and if so does it represent you and if it doesn't pull out the key points that you think really work well and ditch the ones that don't and then draw yourself up some guidelines just need to be on a bit of paper you know we don't use capital letters at all or we are you know actually this business card I've had it for five years and I actually think the design is terrible because my mate did it for me yeah can I get this improved does my logo need switching up just try and get a you know get some distance between you and your brand and Mm. see what see where you can improve like I um have recently developed my branding I mean I I, there was no changing in any sort of colors or anything but I just Mm. feel like who I was a year ago doesn't represent who I am now um (laughs) so I'm in the middle of updating my website I've just redesigned my business cards I've dropped one of the colors no I've dropped two of the colors that um in my brand palette because I just didn't like them and I kind of deemed them unnecessary you know like I said they're guidelines they're there for breaking in my eyes bending um and it's there for progress but you need to just sit Mm. there and take a bit of an audit I guess of what you're doing quite at the moment and see how you can improve on it yeah, it's a couple of really interesting points that you just mentioned there. First being that, you know, by getting this down on paper, you can just pin it up anywhere above your desk or, you know, on the on the back of the fridge or wherever you, you choose to do it. So that when, I guess when you've got an idea about doing something, oh, I'm going to create a, a let head or a something or other, you can then look at that and say, look, does it then fit to what I agreed with myself to do? Um, yeah. So you've always got kind of like a sounding board, I guess, haven't you? Each time you kind of want to um, run past a new idea. But um, even a picture for social media, you know, is yeah. this relevant to my audience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the um, the other thing um, that you mentioned that was really helpful to know as well is that brands do evolve. You know, you mentioned there that you were, you'd, you'd re- revisited yours um, and you then knew that certain colours or whatever wasn't a good fit for you then. So, you know, this is always kind of a, this can be always a working document you can come back to. Um and and just kind of revisit because we do change don't we you know like we do in our own lives our businesses change and um you know have different um assets at different times so you know it's a an evolving document i think this could be for someone fashion and trends change and businesses have got to evolve Mm. with the trends and the changes like you've just got to um and just because it worked 15 years ago doesn't mean it works now so that's a really good quote to end on there. I think <laughs> that's, a, that's a sound bite there. I think um, in and amongst all that you're doing at the moment um, with new offices and all this kind of stuff going on, um, anything else you've got coming up or, or you people can um, sort of catch you on your social media that you're sort of working on? Yeah. So uh, this week and next week we 
as a company are planning our, or promoting, launching, in fact, <laughs> um, our Christmas um, campaign, which is okay. essential. Well, you've got an exclusive here. Um, essentially, um, brand up your business uh, and brand up your Christmas, should I say. Okay. So encouraging um, businesses to actually play around with their brands for Christmas um, oh, in the form of like branded Christmas cards, yes. newsletters, email signatures, you know, just something yeah. a bit fun, bit of fun for yeah. your business. Because um, if you can't have fun at Christmas, when can you? So last year um, I released, a, my Christmas cards were based on music icons, okay, Christmas yeah. music icons. So I had um, George Michael, Bing Crosby, Noddy Holder and Wizard uh, yeah. Christmas cards. But in place of their faces, it was my logo. So this oh, year cool. I'm now extending to have that sort of fun um, with um my clients so we're gonna oh, start pushing that out um i've just got uh two restaurants um in ipswich for their social media yeah. so we're just putting that together now just starting to build their strategy um for that to start going live in um uh, november yeah. um got a charity um in London that focuses on peer-to-peer um, support for uh, depression. So that's like an okay. online messenger base. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're starting to build on that. Um, there's, Like I said earlier, there's more of a trend with social media at the moment. Um, yeah. So I've got quite a few um, accounts bubbling in the background just waiting for confirmation i've got some branding work happening towards the later end of the year and some yeah. copywriting for some websites so we're quite busy <laughs> and then obviously thing. planning um my own website release um, mm-hmm. in january so yeah yeah lots lots of things happening so perfect so if you listen to this um get in touch with um sophie all the details will be available on the show notes page along with all sophie's social media uh, places where are the best places to get in um sort of connect with you would it be instagram or would it be somewhere else yes uh instagram you will definitely get to know me and that is i'm sure is totally different podcast in itself because i believe (laughs) in showing your true self on um social media um so my Instagram handle is soro s o r o dot studio, um, and that is where you will find me. Um, if not, uh, hello at soro studio dot com, or my website is www.sorostudio.com. dot com. Perfect. As I say, all that information will be in the um, show notes. You can just click through and connect with Sophie. Um, thank you so much, Sophie. It's been it's been a really great to um, firstly just to um, get to know more about your business, but equally to have a chat through some of these things that I think people kind of struggle with, and they you know either in the early stages of the business or, or later on. So thank you so much for your time. Um, My pleasure. This evening, um, and it's easy to see from from looking at your social media that it, what is re- really refreshing with what you put out is it is the person I'm, I'm chatting to now you really get a sense of that kind of authenticity which i think is so important as you say and um, i can see from um you know from the website and your social media um through the testimonials that from clients and those sort of things that you're doing a really great job so thank you for for um for, for doing such a great job for your clients um oh thank you but you're really welcome so again this has been make today count my name is ross dean um, catch us next time and i'll see you soon Bye bye